What's going on everybody? Good morning, good evening, wherever you are and whatever time it is. Welcome back to yet another video with you man, Holic, And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 7 of my head-to-head -head campaign. Playing as the Lusitania going up against the Nervii, played by my man Toxborg. In the last episode, ladies and gentlemen, we had a Nervii invasion into Iberia. Things got seriously heated and I highly recommend you make sure you check out that episode to see exactly how the invasion went. But, I'll give you a few seconds to go do that. One, two, three, okay. Spoiler alert, we won decisively. We wiped out the two Nervii stacks that were sent our way. And we got a 12 month truce between us and the Nervii Confederation. Now we need to reorganize our armies in the north, so we're going to have to do some replenishment and reorganizing of the battalions into different armies. We have two armies that will be uh, dedicated to using elephants combined with our good infantry, but only one of our armies up here won't have any elephants, so we do need to kind of change up our tactics based on that, pretty much. But now it is time for us to begin our march to the north. We need to continue with our initiative against the Nervii and actually advance into Gaul, which is where we'll be probably fighting the Nervii the most. The next obvious target is Bertigala, so we begin sending our scouts up north looking for Nervii, Averni, and Vivisci armies. The Vivisci are the people that own Bertigala at this point. Um, Bertigal itself is quite fortified, has a large army, a large fleet, but in the surrounding area we're not really spotting any Massalian or Averni armies, at least not yet, but we'll have to continue looking around to try and find out. So the idea is to take Bertigal. It's a major city, it has walls, and it has a very defensible river to the east over here. You can see this green line. Hopefully we can have two major points of defense over there to stop any Nervii invasions coming in from the north or the far east uh, from Babracti. You can see there with those red arrows. That is the idea. Um, we'll have to see if we can execute the plan though. Additionally, we also are now starting to see the majority of Nervii territory in Gaul. They hold Gaul pretty much across the entire board. And one thing we're very worried about is a coastal invasion into the city of Brigantum. So we'll have to try and figure out how to handle that, possibly even build a fleet uh, pretty soon. Uh, and there's also basically the highway that goes through Basalia. Um, there's going to be basically three major routes where they can attack us from. One way is sending an army down through Massalian territory into ours. Another is coming through Bertigala and another on the coast. So the Nervii have a lot of options and we do have these choke points here in northeastern Iberia along these mountain ranges, but uh, we know the Nervii have around six armies in total at this point, which is really going to easily overwhelm any of these choke points. So things are looking pretty grim, despite our initial success. And speaking of grim, we already find a Nervii invasion force at the, at the city of Nomentum. Uh, it's in the northwestern region of Gaul, basically uh, Brittany. This area is perfect for a staging ground against us, but it's also good for a staging ground for them to launch attacks into the north. So we're not really sure where, we're go where they're going to send those armies, or that army and navy. But the main concern, of course, is that they will come south down to Brigantium, so we'll have to try and get that navy up and running as soon as we can. Um, me and Toxburg do have a general rule that we won't snipe each other's capitals to win the campaign as well. Um, so I'm not too worried about him going down there. But in the meantime, I actually created a very small navy just so I could try and transport an army. And this army was ideally going to go up to Britain and try and invade up there. However, one of the massive drawbacks of playing as the Lusitani is that we do not have supplies when we are on our fleet. So because of that, I just wanted to test this out. Uh, our army ended up suffering massive attrition just within a single turn. So because of that, we won't be able to do any long-range naval assaults anytime soon. It has to be small little leapfrog things that happen, and it's just not practical. The Nervi I will see is coming, and we won't be able to get up to Britain that way. But it was a little uh, cheeky attempt at the very least. So instead, winter comes, and we now have all three of our major armies ready to begin the invasion into Bertigala. We have two armies in an ambush stance, and one now raiding in the center of them. Hopefully this will cause the AI to send out their armies 
and get an easy ambush for us to get a nice easy victory. So we send in the declaration of war. The Averni will join the Vaviski in the fight. However, our truce with the Nervii means that they are no longer allied with the Averni. So this should just be a war between us, the Vaviski, and the Averni, and our little uh, city-state Iol that is a military ally of ours because they joined us. However, we will suffer a diplomatic penalty, uh, possibly causing even more wars to erupt, and immediately that gets proven to be correct. Massalia betrays us and joins the war with the Vaviski and the Averni against us. This is precisely what we did not want to happen. This is the ultimate absolute screw up. All of Gaul is now attacking us, and Nervii are the only people who aren't just yet, and that's because we've forced them into a truce. So basically, all of Gaul will be at war with us momentarily. Um, this could not have gone absolutely worse whatsoever. The Vaviski even launched a counterattack against us. They spot our armies that were in an ambush stance. So that makes that even worse, and now we have a one on one fight between our army and the Vaviski from Berdegala. So let's jump on the battlefield and see how our forces fare up against the Gauls. This battle is going to be a little bit awkward because as you can see we are along a massive mountain ridge. A lot of cliffs here, a lot of steep edges and a lot of rough terrain that makes any kind of discipline formation basically not viable. Which is okay because that plays into our wheelhouse but it also fits the goals just fine so we'll have to see how we go. The idea is for us to get on top of this central mountain in the middle of the battlefield, set up a defensive line going across the entire thing in little sections. If we can do that first then hopefully we can launch a uh, counter attack when we are ready but the enemy actually sends forward their archers along the hills and tries to sneak them around us. Our cavalry is in a perfect position to counter this and gets beautiful charges against them and and the Vaviski archers get wiped out before they can get off barely a few volleys. Meanwhile, the Vaviski have their main army finally arrive towards the mountain ridge and they start splitting off into three major groups, one going to help out the archers, another coming up our center but slightly going around to the left to avoid the cliffs, and another section of their army is flanking around to our right hand flank, uh, which will basically be attacking our weaker side. Well, we have some cav, but only very light tier infantry. And the infantry though, even though they're on melee troops, they actually do have their own javelins. So that's super helpful as well. That will give us some free kills and disrupt the enemy formation, making their charge not as effective as it otherwise would be. And we're also rotating our bear warriors, of course, down to that right hand side to try and get some beautiful downhill charges against the Vaviski, but we'll have to see how we handle that. In the meantime, the center of the battlefield is also ignited as the Vaviski turn an about face and go straight up the hill towards our men. We're basically engaged across the entire front at this point. The only area that isn't is the left hand flank over here, but it's about to be engaged. The Vaviski are starting to basically charge directly up at us. They were attacking us, so it does make sense. Um, and we're going to try and get some counter charges though with our cavalry by charging into their swordsmen specifically uh, because they can't handle charges very well. It's not very uh, high tier cav whatsoever, so we won't get a lot of kills, but it will disrupt their charge and it allows our bear warriors to come in and get an excellent charge on the enemy infantry going downhill. So we get a complete charge against them and our cavalry disrupts their formation. We'll kill them quite quickly actually. Meanwhile though the right hand flank is looking very iffy. We already have two major holes in our main battle line and one of our swordsman units over here has become isolated and surrounded. We do have cavalry trying to help out but it's not happening quick enough and as a result of that we will end up losing that unit on our far right flank. Uh, we're trying to rotate cavalry to help out the center and get that uh, side of things rolling. But it's not going quick enough and the enemy general is running back and forth along his battle line offering encouragement and morale to his troops. In the meantime though the left hand flank for us goes especially well. That cavalry charge combined with the bear warriors was timed perfectly but now it is time to send in the elephants. The battle is reaching a pivotal stage. We need to swing things heavily in our favor especially on this right hand side. 
Our elephants get a beautiful charge down straight into the Yeremi Pavisky soldiers. Even though they are actually fairly elite, at least some of their units are, there's there's no way that they can handle a charge of such magnitude. And also our cavalry swing around the rear of the enemy. Uh, they begin charging their lighter infantry. These half-naked uh, swordsmen and spearmen go absolutely flying from that rear charge. But that was beautiful. Very nice charge. And because of that, though, we send in the elephants in one final charge as well. And because of that, we get a rout of the enemy Vavisky force across the entire battlefield. And we win our first battle in goal. Here are the stats if you would like to see them. As you can see, our lighter cavalry got hammered, as did our mercenary Skutari. Um, our bear warriors got fantastic amount of kills, but they also took some pretty heavy casualties, so we need to be a little bit more careful with them. Especially this army, because they don't have that many. So uh, that will be a bit of a pain to replenish. But then the Vavisky army was pretty terrible all around. Um, although Toxborg did his best to deal serious casualties to us. Which he basically did. He killed about a thousand of our men. We will ransom the captives back though to try and make the uh, allies of the Vavisky a little bit more friendly towards us. Such as the Averni. However, uh, even more factions joined the wars against us. The Osatani. Uh, they are... Allies of the Massalians are now joining the war as well. They basically hold the city of Taraco in northeastern Iberia. The Vavisky are launching a naval invasion towards the city of Brigantium. They have a massive navy. Um, we don't really have a large navy at all whatsoever, and it's going to take a while for us to get anything that can compete against theirs. And even then, we can't really afford it, so we're going to have to basically be patient there. And in the meantime, try to focus on YP out in the Berdigala. Uh, land forces and then worry about assaulting the city. In the meantime, Don Taraco is sending armies against us. They have one massive stack on our border or another in the city. Uh, so we're going to have to break off our three pronged, pronged attack of Bertigala and uh, divert armies back down south to ensure our central territories are secure. Here we are intercepting a Vavisky force that was marching into Iberian lands. It is not an ambush though. And because of that, it was a fairly even battle. Uh, I ended up fighting this Mangali, but I won't bother showing it to you guys. We did end up winning fairly decisively. The enemy had literally zero cavalry in their army. And because of that, pretty much alone, uh, they were basically guaranteed to lose. We get a decisive victory and again continue ra ransoming the captives so we get more money. And we get a little bit more favor with these factions. Uh, the Orsatani continue their march into Iberian lands, and uh, and once again, we will be fighting the, that battle manually, but I won't bother showing it to you guys. So it was a fairly easy win, at least for the most part, with these AI armies we're going up against. Even though they're controlled by Toxborg, there's just not all that much they can do against our really high-quality armies. But here are the stats if you want to have a look at them very briefly. But again, you can see our bear warriors got hammered, but they got amazing amounts of kills. Our elephants did pretty good, not a lot of kills, but they scared the majority of the enemy army. And our new Legionnaire-esque uh, Iberian swordsmen that have that uh, chainmail army, you can see we have about six units of them, I believe. They are fantastic. They got a lot of kills for very little loss. They are basically the equivalent of Iberian Legionnaires, so uh, they're going to be super useful in our upcoming battles with the Nervii. We get a decisive victory against the Orsatani and almost wipe out their army entirely. We will go off and finish it off though, and order is over. But here's just a little brief overview. All of this red is basically our enemies. Plus, we also have the Nervii that control territory to the north. Even though they're white right now, technically they're an enemy anyway because they're controlled by Toxborg. So, quite literally, all of Gaul is going to be at war with us. And the Vassalians also hold territory in uh, basically Switzerland and southern Germany over there. Carthage is still barely surviving on the islands of Corsica and Sardinia, but they are basically done, so we're not worried about them whatsoever. We are still very worried about Taraco, though, so we're trying to figure out exactly what to do. We can try and set up a defensive position right here on this main road that comes up towards our territory. Although ideally, we do want to march down and take the city to stop them 
from trying to hit us from the southeast. The Massalians are starting to send armies from Tolosa area though, and the Averni won't be too far behind as they'll be coming in from the northeast uh, near Nemosos, uh, the capital, which is actually quite valuable because it has gold. Berdigala right now though is quite open, so now is the time for us to launch a counterattack into the city itself. Uh, once we take that, we'll be hopefully uh, drawing the enemy in from the east and the northeast to come in and, and attack the city instead of going deeper into Iberia. So that's basically the idea. We need to take Bertigala and make it a punching bag, basically. However, we have some grim news. The Nervii are coming once again. They haven't declared war on us, but their armies are starting to march down that uh, Massalian highway I talked about earlier. And they are sending them down towards Iberia. There's nowhere else they're going. They have no other enemies at this point. They are coming again for us. So we'll be keeping our scouts very active in the area to try and monitor their movements and counter their movements appropriately. However, now is the time for us to counterattack. One army will be going towards Bertigala, another one towards Tolosa, with the idea of liberating at least one faction in one of those cities, possibly even both. It would be nice to take Bertigala, so like I said, we can use it as a punching bag for the enemy. But uh, liberating it also would be good so we get extra armies to help us out in this fight. We go off and attack the general who's outside the city of Bertigala, thus drawing out the garrison. Uh, we don't do a night attack though because we want to make sure that the garrison is drawn out of the city as reinforcements. We fought that battle Bengali as well. However, it was pretty easy and overall we didn't really lose too many troops, so I won't bother showing it to you all. There's that slow motion one-on-one -on -one with the characters. Slow motion, by the way, because um, we're doing this in online, uh, in an online campaign, obviously, so it's just a little bit of latency desync lag, but not a big deal. Anyway, the main thing is that we've wiped out a lot of the garrison of Berdigala, however, a lot of them replenish in the same turn as well, and we're going to see some awkward stuff with the replenishment of this garrison here. But um, what we do next after winning that battle is we just order resolve the settlement and take it instantly within the exact same turn. What we'll do though is sack it, and then I plan to liberate it just because I was really urgently wanting to get an ally. However, for the first time in like freaking ages, I sacked the city and then the game made my army run away too far. So now I couldn't liberate it in the same turn, which is what I usually do anyway uh, for my other campaigns. So that was really frustrating, and you're going to see me suffer massively because of that. I really should have just liberated it and not risked my army. Just doing that weird thing where it gets sent, uh, where it gets sent away from a city it just attacked. And here is the punishment right now. The Bertigala Navy returns. It is a massive navy and their garrison replenishes literally within a single turn. It's almost entirely back at full strength. That's super frustrating. Uh, I really can't overstate that. Man, I really wasn't happy when I saw those numbers come back up because that navy combined with that garrison is way too much for my armies to handle. So Bertigala, despite us actually sacking the city, it's going to have to be... Uh, saved to be occupied for a later date. In the meantime though, Rome is attacking Massalia, so hopefully uh, they'll actually be active and come and help us out. We can't be allies with Rome, that's part of mine and Toxborg's rule set, no alliances with Rome or Carthage. Um, so we're trying to, well we are avoiding any diplomatic uh, relations with them. Speaking of Massalia though, we continue our advance deeper into Gaul by attacking the city of Tolosa. Uh, we'll all to resolve that battle away. We will take some casualties, but I'm preferring to do that rather than allow Toxborg to really focus on hammering down our specialized units and not wanting to risk sacking the city and then having the garrison somehow magically reappear. Uh, we just liberate the town. But now it is time for our two armies to focus on Berdigala, so we're going to. So we're going to move them close together, and then we're going to have them uh, besiege the city. They still have the navy there though, um, so we're going to siege it out for quite a few months. Hopefully the navy will just leave. I have seen AI armies do that before, um, but we'll just have to wait and find out really. But if they don't leave, then taking the city is going to cause us massive casualties. And we do Just give them bad. one last chance of Close peace me. between us and the Babiski, but they absolutely so refuse us despite their capital looking to fall uh, all over again. 
Uh, very quickly though, I did want to do some internal politics covering. We do have only the Imperium level 3 and because of that, our loyalty with all of our political parties is actually really, really good. They're all well in the 20s. And another thing I've done to keep them all very loyal is actually make them all generals. And my king hasn't really been leading any armies. You'll, be, you'll notice that I haven't really mentioned him much throughout this campaign. And that's because he's mainly just sitting at home in our capital as a general, but he's actually just doing administrative work. So if you give basically command of your armies to your other political parties, they will love you and support you for it, but they will grow more powerful. So it's a bit of a risk, but that is why I've been handling politics fairly easily throughout this campaign. Uh, to those of you in the comments asking about that. In the meantime, though, it is time for us to continue intensifying our siege on Bredegala. We actually send our fleet over to try and help out, swing the order resolve more heavily back in our favor. Um, but right now, it still isn't worth it. The order resolve casualties leave most of our armies at about 60 to 70 percent capacity, which is just not good enough when we'll have to fight the Averni within the next few turns. We'll continue the siege for another turn or two, but it's looking like we're probably going to have to pull out. It really just depends on what the Vaviski uh, Navy ends up deciding to do. However, in the next turn, we discover Massalian troops mobilizing in the area. Just outside of Narbo, they have a full 2020 stack, which is very concerning considering we had sent one of our armies towards Taraco. However, in this blue area I just highlighted for you, that's where we believe the Nervii actually have our army right now. Their army that was marching down through Massalia was last seen very close to Narbo, and then this turn we can't see it. So it's looking like it must have disappeared into the fog of war. And this basically means that we have to pull away from our siege on Taraco and actually focus on locating the Nervii army, which is controlled, of course, by Toxborg. And Toxborg is much smarter than the AI, and so this is actually very scary that he's willing to assault and send armies directly into Iberia without even contesting us at Berdegala. In the next turn, our spy moves south from the Massalian territory, and not only does he see the full army composition of that army outside of Narbo, but we find another Massalian full army, and we find the Nervii army. So basically, we have three full stacks of enemy armies coming straight into Iberia, completely ignoring our military that is uh, basically on the border between Iberian Gaul at Bertagala. So that's really concerning for us. And it basically means we have to start this war with the Nervii now. We can, by the way, it's been 12 turns since we've uh, started our truce with the Nervii, so we can declare war on them. But this army right here, and then the uh, Massalian ones behind it, we cannot allow them to move in unison. We can't allow them to attack our cities all at the same time. Otherwise, we have absolutely no chance. Even though the Massalian armies are actually pretty poor, uh, the AI hasn't done very well with them. Also, towards Berdegala, we're actually pulling away from the siege to try and set up armies along the river east of the city. You can see at the top of the screen, we have three massive Nervii armies coming down from northern Gaul, and that isn't even all of our armies that they actually have on the field. So, we now know of four full Nervii stacks. All of them are heading towards Iberia, and we have to assume that the rest are as well. So... We're going to try and move our two armies that we had at Berigala to the east, set up along the river there, possibly get an ambush or two, maybe even get like a bridge battle that's favorable to us, and we'll maybe uh, be able to contain the Nervii in Gaul. It's very unlikely, but at least uh, we had to try something, because right now our position against the Nervii is looking very bleak. We don't have a very good economy, despite my severe investment in agriculture, and uh, our, what little industry we did have with our resources, uh, our economy is just not capable of sustaining many armies. We only can afford three at this time. But like I said, we do need to start getting some initiatives. So what we're going to do is move our army that was outside of Taraco right up literally next to the Nervii army, but put them above them on the campaign map so they're actually uphill technically. And then now is the time for us to declare war and attack the Nervii army. In theory, we should have the higher ground against them, and we'll also have the initiative by uh, catching the army before it could be in a position where uh, Toxborg is happy to use it. So 
or at least disrupting his plans here and making life harder for him in terms of invading Iberia. We don't even send an ultimatum instead, our armies literally just declare war and begin marching onto the battlefield in the very next morning. Now, it's time for the Lusitani to once again take on the Nervii. And here is our North African elephants, the sun shining on their big gorgeous faces, the birds flying, getting ready to pick at the dead corpses of the Nervii Blue Walkers who have once again invaded our homeland. At no provocation of our own, might I add. But anyway, uh, looking at a bit of a tactical overview, we have our major army composition in the center here on top of these southern hills. Um, we're basically forming a main battle line out in the open. We want the enemy to come out and fight us in this valley right in front. The idea is for our armies to clash, hopefully in the valley, and then we'll be able to swing around possibly our left contingent over here, which is where we're keeping our bear warriors in the forest. Um, we're hoping to send them down along the left-hand side deeper into the valley than behind the flanks of the enemy. And on the right-hand side over here, we have three units of light cavalry that will be looking out for any naked swordsmen of the Nervii, and then we'll also be sending them out to explore and look out for any more hidden contingents of the Nervii as well. So, basically trying to cover the entire battlefield and make sure we don't get ambushed because that is a Nervii specialty on the battlefield. Getting out of the tactical view, you can see our army is definitely in the open, but we can't see any of the Nervii troops here. We're trying to basically give them a situation where they'll feel confident to engage us, where they're seeing most of our army and they can feel uh, like they have the upper hand. However, the Nervii are just going to basically pull back and keep hiding in the forest for the majority of this battle, although they do begin by sending out some cavalry contingents to do some scouting on their own part. So we'll try and bait them out a little bit. I'll actually send down one of my calf contingents to try and draw them down into the valley and uh, get them surrounded, but we'll see how that goes. On the far side of the battlefield though, we've finally found their hidden units that had a small contingent of two units of naked swordsmen and at least one archer unit, possibly more. They were trying to send them around the flank of our army, but thankfully our cavalry were in the perfect position to counter them and we'll be tracking their movements as they disappear back somehow into an open field, but they are anyway. Finally, the Nervii main battle line comes out of the forest and begins facing off against us. However, our Valeric Slingers begin engaging with them very quickly, and the Nervii are not willing to take any of that fire whatsoever, so they'll instantly turn around and run back into the forest like the cows they are and force us to try and make the first move. Speaking of moves, though, the chariots of the enemy begin coming, pouring out of the forest, just as we send one of our cav units out to basically bait them out. So we have two units of enemy camp, two units of chariots chasing down now one single unit of Lusitani shock cavalry. We do have some bear warriors nearby, although they're not ideal for dealing with enemy cav. We will have to rotate our elephants and cavalry to help out. Then we also have the Nervii archers who were hidden. They can actually shoot while, while they're invisible. Uh, getting some very easy free kills on our Balearic Slingers, but thankfully we managed to spot them and deal some severe damage to them and we'll have to try and focus fire on them when we finally spot them again. But basically, now is when the battle begins kicking off. We've managed to basically uh, slow down all of their cavalry and chariots into a long grind out fight. You can see our elephants and cavalry in the distance over there coming up to try and reinforce, but right now we have two units of cavalry against there, two units of cav and two chariots. And then boom, we just send in a third unit of cavalry and we have more coming on the way along with our elephants. So as long as we can keep them pinned down, it looks like we should win the cav fight. And we really have to in order to win this battle decisively. But because we have the enemy cav locked down, the Nervii respond by getting furious and charging out of the forest across our entire front. It's not ideal timing and our general over here is almost getting caught out by enemy uh, spearmen. We're also losing a lot of our cavalry that are taking fire and some friendly fire as well from our own slingers. Um, but they're basically just trying to keep the enemy cav pinned down for as long as possible for our elephants who are actually coming over the hill right now. You can see them cresting and charging into the battle. Meanwhile in the center we're now getting fully engaged by the enemy infantry. We're also getting engaged by their archers still so we're going to be trying to push through along all of these red arrows 
in that kind of formation where we're trying to swing around and use the gaps in the enemy line to our advantage and basically envelop them with one or two units at a time. Uh, one unit will attack from the front while the others will swing through that gap and try to hit the enemy from the side. Even on the right hand flank over here we're still getting similar results. However, the naked swordsman of the Nervia have killed one of our units and is trying to advance towards our position along with some ambushing archers that are shooting out of the bushes there. You could just see them coming out of nowhere. They're still hidden while shooting so that's very hard for us to try and track down. The fighting gets incredibly intense as our swordsmen begin clashing with their own. They have some very elite high tier, high arm and high, highly well trained swordsmen. Uh, but they are going up against some of our elite legionnaire style Iberians. So we'll, I think we'll have the advantage there but we will need to send in some support when possible. But speaking of support, our cavalry begins flanking around on the right hand flank. Specifically our general is chasing down the enemy archers. This is basically... The next major threat besides the cavalry that can get hundreds of kills for very little cost. Um, so we really had to chase them down. And after chasing down the enemy cavalry and their archers, the rest of the enemy army begins fleeing from the field in massive droves. Hundreds of the enemy Nervii warriors flee from the field and they actually will mostly escape. Although we did kill many before they did so. So we have a close victory. War with the Nervii resumes. It couldn't last forever, the peace, especially not with the warmongering attitude of the Nervii. We did take some pretty serious casualties here, although we did win the battle and uh, we should be able to order resolve the rest of the army away before they can escape out of Iberia or recruit mercenaries and continue their push towards us. Although we will need to recruit mercenaries ourselves. We took a lot of casualties in our cavalry department and in our mercenaries and bear warriors so uh, this definitely was a hard won victory and it's very uh, scary and makes me very skeptical of our upcoming war against the Nervii. We're we'll continue ransoming the captives and getting what money we can um, but at this point it doesn't really matter what we do diplomatically we're at war with all of Gaul um, and that's including even our Iberian cousins uh, living in Taraco. But like I said, we actually orders of the rest of that Nervi army away and we wipe out a complete stack of the enemy. So uh, now all we need to focus on is that three stack uh, grouping of Nervi units that are coming down towards Bertigala. Continue ransoming to get as much money as possible so we can hire mercenaries. But ladies and gentlemen, that is basically where we'll have to leave it for today. Um, we have basically fallen down heavily from grace. Uh, this campaign was starting to look very good for us, but now you can see here while we're zooming in, those massive Nervii armies are coming towards us. And even though in a one-on-one -on -one engagement, our armies seem to be better, um, they just have the numbers. And so it's looking like this campaign is going to be a serious struggle for us. If anything, it looks like very soon, actually, we'll be having massive battles with our entire military forces going up against all of what the Nervii has to offer. Perhaps... That will decide the fate of the Nervii and the Lusitani. But we'll have to wait until the next episode. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. And I shall see you in the next one.